This is upriver from downtown Idaho Falls, which is our destination today. Over a century ago, an enterprising fellow built a toll bridge across these narrows for people going up to the gold fields in Montana. And a community sprung up around it that has turned into Idaho's second largest metro area and a place for antiquing. My sister used to live here and she said the thrifting was great. She did her whole house in thrifted items. Unfortunately, I am here on a Wednesday and this place is closed. But I know a place that is open and we're headed there next. And here we are. This is Trackside Mall, Antiques, Gifts and Crafts. I hear it's pretty good. We're going to take a look and see if we can find any antiques and vintage that our collectors will really love. Well, right away we see uranium glass and we see carnival glass and we see there's an entire upstairs and a basement. Colette is the name of the sculptor. This is a huge marble mounted floor size bronze that appears to be French and should date sometime in the early 20th century. And it is priced at 3000. She's just amazing for her stature. We see these toll lamps around a lot as floor lamps or as little table lamps, but I really love the sign. My wife has a strict get rid of everything now policy. So apparently they're not agreeing on which lamp should go in the house, but he has decided that he is going to save his marriage by selling it here. Speaking of being a railroad town, here is an old HO train set by a company called Barney that I'm surprisingly not familiar with because I did a lot of HO railroad stuff when I was a kid in this era. This might be a few years before my time, but it is the entire set except for the track for $115. Some interesting old school electronic equipment here, including this, which is a great clock radio by Sony. Very sophisticated looking for its time. It's as is, or else I'd be buying it because $20 is a very good price for that model, but they've taken into account the condition. Cranberry glass, $65. I think for the fun and the shape of that, that's a really good price. There is the Bohemia label. $85 on the gum machine is a pretty reasonable price. Rather plain black color though. This is the Zenith Transoceanic Radio, and this is one of the first shortwave radios that was portable that really made a splash in the marketplace. They've always been pretty collectible because people can use them to listen to other people all around the world. And because of that, they're popular. They've got a big antenna in the back that comes out. This one's priced at $145, which is about the going rate in good working condition. And this one should date to about $1950. You will definitely see taxidermy in this part of the country because there's a lot of people who do lodge decoration and this is just an accepted part of it. If you look at the show Yellowstone, you'll notice that taxidermy is in some of those sets as well. They've done what I've done, which a lot of stores seem to be doing now, which is taking these older kitchen hutches and kitchen queens. And if they're the basic painted ones, well, they're redoing them as kitchen displays in antique stores. And I think it's really fun. Set of shakers there for 40 cute al salt and peppers all over the place here. Here's another case of the uranium glass, and they have caught on to the cadmium too. Now notice the egret does not glow a whole lot. With cadmium, it really seems to be, I notice if it's a heavier, thicker, more opaque and less translucent part of the glass, it tends to glow more. I think that this chemical seems to affect the tips and edges of things the most. The Fenton custard that glows here. You have prices, well, the Campbell Soup Kid version, this is $30 on that bell. They did those as advertising briefly around 1980. A lot of companies did advertising around 1980 because the economy was bad and they needed to make extra money. This kitty cat with the painting is priced at $70. Basket at $55. I like theme shakers. I think it's because Treasure Craft came up with that idea. And since I like Treasure Craft, I've always looked for things that are themes. This one is the mouse eating the cheese. Japanese from the 60s, priced at $21. Some nice Roseville pieces here. I like this particular pattern in the back here, the Bushberry, priced at 110. We don't see this pattern so much. Bleeding Heart little base here. This is only $35. I think that's very cute and a nice color for that price. Now, you can tart up a space and do everything you can to make it look old, and this is very cute looking, but I don't see one old thing in that booth that says antiques. So we've got the case three and three quarter mushroom pommel. See the shape of the pommel on the back? That's what the back is called. It's like a butt of a rifle, but it's a pommel on a knife. This one is a butt fishing knife. 
This one is Western from Boulder, Colorado. I've noticed Western knives seem to sell for good premiums. The one in the middle also is a Western, and it has a patent number dating to about 1935 or 40. And the one with the ivory handle, also Western. All of these are priced pretty high because Western is a very popular brand out West. The cheapest we see on these is 135. It's nice to see a case with dolls. We haven't seen a lot of dolls in one place for a long time. This composition doll with the very sweet face is priced at 45. This is an Anne Shirley doll. That was one of F and B's more popular dolls, priced at 120 from the 1940s. She seems to have her original clothes. The composition baby doll. Now she's been redressed, and you can tell. Look at that embroidery flower on the hell. They didn't do those back in the 1930s when this was made. The Nerva. And this says it is actually tin, and it is a newer body that that has been put on. There were a lot of people in the 50s who started collecting dolls, and they started putting old doll heads on new bodies. So you do have to check the whole doll out to make sure it's original. A lot of cute little celluloid girls here, and some half dolls, porcelain dolls. I don't usually look at anything that's a doll of the world type thing, but this one's very cute in the composition for $15. Now, this is not going to be a place where there's a lot of drinking because this is a heavily Mormon area. And so cocktail stuff may be inexpensive. 39 is actually a pretty good price on this cocktail shaker these days. I'm seeing interest in white marbling. I haven't seen a whole lot of people buying black yet, but with the gray interiors coming in, I suspect we might see dark marble as a contrast as well. This is priced at $3.99. This is the sideboard with a little bit of Art Nouveau detail from right about 1900. You can see the detail up in the crest here. This is similar to the Tiki jackets, but these are the ones with the Western brands on them, also by Siesta Wear. It's great that it's got the original holder. $49 would be a good price, but the jackets have been dishwashed and that ruins them, unfortunately. A lot of people are taking these 1920s, 30s era French style beds that are really, really small like this and turning them into benches. And the way they're doing it is they're using the bottom part as the curved part of the bench and then cutting down the headboard and using it as the front apron. And then they just build a bench between the two pieces. They appear to have three of these giant Japanese koinobori carp that are big wind socks or could be used in parade. They are priced about half of what they sell for online at $85 to $95 each. They would be really cool looking in the booth, and I'd be really tempted, except they still make them new, much exactly like this. They have some other interesting hanging pieces. This is a Soviet banner from the time of the CCCP, as you can see by the big logo there. And in Cyrillic, it says, we will come to the victory of communist labor. The other side, we have Lenin saying, workers of the world unite. Soviet Army barracks posters as well. There's a lot of interest in this in the West. Hard to sell in Central Europe and Eastern Europe because they would like to forget the Soviet era. But people in the West are very fascinated with it. Twin Winton Stowe cookie jar for just $18 is an awfully good price from the 1970s. This space is a little more what people usually think of when they go into antique stores. As opposed to Soviet era stuff, they're used to seeing things like this Fenton Epern, only $85. I know it's the milk glass, which is more common, but that's a nice large size. That seems like a good price. There's a whole bunch of tumblers. We have Fenton Orange Tree. This one's priced at 25. This is pretty in the blue. This one is a Fenton Blue Melody. These are all early Fenton from about 1900 to 1910. Some nice trunk bases behind there as well. This one has more of the nubby where it really looks like a tree bark, which is where they came up with the name trunk base. This is a Northwood and it's priced at 40. Prices are not unreasonable for what they have. Big old Viking epic piece for 35. The Santini piece here that looks like chalk but is actually a resin. These were very popular in the 1960s, the last time neoclassicism was really in style. And here we have the Roman Chariot by Santini at $45. There's the Santini label on the bottom. I don't believe this is his original whip. Otherwise, I would be interested in that at that price. It's Jefferson's Ruffle and Rings. They went out of business just before 1910. Northwood acquired a lot of their molds, as did some other companies. Now, this piece is cute. This is Duncan Sanibel. This is from about 1950. I've sold the slightly larger version of this piece before. 
Oh, and that's only $6. See, there's one they didn't uh, recognize, so I will take that for $6. Don't assume that just because you see a dealer who specializes in a certain type of merchandise that every piece of that kind of merchandise is going to be priced at full retail. Sometimes dealers price for other reasons. He might have gotten 10 or 12 of these at the same time, for example, and just need to sell them off. And I'm happy to have one at that price. Well, I'm making an offer on the Lennon flag, so we'll see how that goes. And it turns out that uh, they knew who I was, and that's great because they said, you are free to walk the whole store and film, so I'm going to do some more. Another Jefferson glass piece. I always like this tracery because it's multicolored. It's not just one color on the outside that was added. We saw this Al from West Germany in another video recently and with the glass eyes from the 1980s. Maybe this one has a clear, nope, can't read the mark on this one either because it's a bank. But for $13, that bank might have to come with me. I like really prominent patterns, so this stippled star is something I enjoy. And it's interesting because this is green opalescent, but this Fenton piece, the beaded star, actually does have uranium in it, and it does glow. A lot of the opalescent from that period doesn't, so again, it always pays to look. There's the Rose of Sharon butter dish, or Sharon pattern, from the 1930s next to it. These very glowy 1930s depression glass pitchers glow. This is a rather dramatic pewter sculpture from the 1970s by an artist named Poland. And Poland pewter actually sells pretty well. It's super detailed, as you can see. Here we have the kid who has lost control of the horse and is running through the wash day. Mom is not happy. It's priced at $150. They have several here. Painting the town. Looks like he's having a drink while he rides horseback. I don't think that's recommended and the line rider here. Well, thankfully, I have not outgrown the bathroom scale, but I do like the old floor scale. These would have been used in, oh, railroad stations, post offices, anywhere they collected packages. This one can weigh up to a thousand pounds, and it is priced at $450. Here's a big old hand-blown carboy. This thing is huge, this glass bottle, and it looks like it's all hand-blown. You can see all the imperfections. This is a neat old piece. It is priced at $350, but it's gigantic. What a beautiful French travel poster. I always enjoy the French travel posters because they're just so soft and idealized. This one is for the Paris Lion Marseille Railway, and this is vintage. It is not a reproduction. It has its original stamp right in the middle of it to let you know. These folks advertise that they will deliver this furniture, which is good because it's big, strong, hardy American oak furniture cabinets from about 1900 when people were first settling in this area, and they're not light. Some neat vintage fiesta wear here. The cobalt blue is a later color, but the light blue and the yellow and the green and the ivory are all original 1930s colors. They have $100 on the serving bowl. That's the biggest and most expensive piece. Nice three-stacking lawyer's case here, a nice short one. They can stack as high as you want, but some people want lower ones because they can use the surface at, uh, as eye-level display. This one's priced at four seventy-five, which for three stacks is right in the ballpark. If you think you're not finding enough bargains, well, this box is free, including some neat old doll value books. Of course, values are down on dolls, but it would be good for identification. I already have them, or I would take them, but I'm going to leave them for some other collector to find. Items priced to sell. Well, I believe it. Let's see if there's any items that we want to buy. Ghana, China, 19 pieces for $24. That is awfully inexpensive. Oh, set of two green-footed glasses. Well, these look like uranium glass, but they're actually French, and they're very slick to the touch. So they look old, but they are not as old as they look. This decanter is fun. One problem, though, is that the leather shrinks and the plastic shrinks, and it is very hard to get them to cork after a while. Look at this guy. Cast iron, made by Hubley. This is original paint. It hasn't been repainted. The eyes are good. Seaming is very clear and polished off like it should be. Priced at $175. Here's another big old bottle. This is a Demijohn from the 1840s to 1860s. And yes, it is slanted. You know, quality control when everything was hand-blown. Well, you got what you got and you used it. You can see the blobby top that was applied. You can see that there's only one seam because there's a two-part mold that does not include the collar. And then you can see the bottom is kind of blown out and shaped. 
We see this particular Vienna art tray a lot in the Northwest because the Bohemia Brewing Company in Portland, Oregon, used this as their advertisement around 1910, and she's just beautiful, and they were distributed all over the Northwest. She's priced at 75 Now, here's what school bills look like. There's a whole bunch on this shelf, and they're priced between 25 and 35 which is actually pretty reasonable for what they are. These are going to date back to the era of the rural schools, so you them to bring them into class. When a lot of those rural schools went away, a lot of these bills ended up in private hands. Speaking of atomic age, because this is definitely a town that the atomic age has affected with great growth. Well, this is an atomic era thing, and I'm going to plug it in and see if it works and what it looks like. Well, the lamp part isn't all that exciting. I was hoping it would light up all of these acrylic tendrils in this interesting sculptural form and maybe have them cast light themselves. I have to admit that thing is so strange that I am going to buy it and put a stronger, little stronger colored bulb in it. It just has a little Christmas bulb in the bottom. So I'm thinking if I can get something, maybe LED, now that we have that, we'll light it up a little better and you'll get the real effect. If you like munitions crates, this one's actually really interesting because it's big and it is for the East German Army. So we know that this hasn't been used since the 1980s. It's priced at 110 which is actually really not a bad price for a big foot locker, and it is something different. We're going to go upstairs now. They say they have three floors, and she says she's pretty full. I like this mirror here, although it says it's as is. I think it's still cute. All right, up the stairs we go. And there is another full level of stuff up here, including coins and bills. This is what a dollar looked like in 1917. It's not been that long that the dollar has been what we think of as being a dollar. Dollars were made as legal tender, but they were usually done in a regional fashion. So here's a $10 bill from 1901 with one of the last buffalo on it. In the 1930s, we see bills the size that we're used to now. And this one on the bottom is priced quite a bit more and the other ones, they're usually about 20 to $25 in great condition. This one is 185 because it's from Hawaii. You may be able to see Hawaii superimposed on the back where it's printed. That was because they were having trouble getting enough circulation of money over in Hawaii. And this was right before the Second World War. Here's a very pretty Murano console bowl priced at 45 That seems like a pretty good deal to me. I like the color scheme. I like the way it turns. The quality seems to be really good. I have this feeling that there's probably some room in this, and I'm going to see if they might consider giving a dealer discount or taking a small offer since I don't see a space sale going on here. I like the Roseville hanging basket, and what's neat is it's got the original chain. These are almost always missing. It's gotten a little tangled up in their display, but that is what you're looking for. That's how they did it, just little hooks, and there's three, and then the hanging chain. The fact that it has the chain makes it a more valuable piece. All three handles are in good shape. This actually looks very clean. It's $125, so not something I'll be picking up, but for a collector, having the original chain, it would be worth that price. Yes, $18 on the Alaskan one. I have the same one for sale for $15 in Centralia. It's pre-statehood, and pre-statehood Alaska things are definitely worth looking for. Eskimo boys carving ivory. Eskimo baby, that might be a little general in today's parlance. The prices I'm seeing seem like they're realistic prices. A lot of times when you see coins in antique malls, they're priced a little bit high because they have to pay the mall commission and there isn't that much margin in coins. But these seem like they're priced about where they should be. A bunch of Morgan dollars in there from the 1880s and 90s. I'll have to look at my list and see if there's any I need for my collection. I've always been parcel to bone dishes because I like to eat a lot of fish. And it's nice to have something to put the bones on so they're not on your plate where they can get mixed back into the food. So I actually find them to be somewhat useful. These are from about 1900 They're $45 for the four pieces. When Marilyn Monroe was slighted in 1951 for wearing a dress to a Beverly Hills party that the reporter said would have looked better if it was a potato sack, she in 20th Century Fox said, fine, we'll just test that theory. And she had her designer make her the famous Idaho potato sack dress. And that poster is here for sale in the antique mall now. A very iconic dress, as it turned out. Unless you forget we're out west. Well, here's something for the horsey set. We've got a couple of saddles. These look like barn finds that might need some restoration or just be fun to hang. But they do have some good information on this one. It's a double rig by Shirley Brown. 
interesting. We don't see so many women given credit for saddlery, but there certainly are a lot of women who are involved with that sort of thing. We're near Yellowstone, so you're going to see things like old backboards like this, priced at 100 This is from the Second World War. It's actually got a March 15, 1945 manufacturing date on it. A pair of snowshoes here, because we're in the right part of the country for that. U.S. Navy life jacket from 1945. That's an interesting piece, priced at 125 Oh, Grandma made an afghan for her plastic bowl. Isn't that cute? Right out of the 70s. $12. Cute set of highballs. Now, one thing I'm seeing a lot of younger dealers doing, and I understand because you find things sometimes in odd numbers, I'm seeing a lot of younger dealers putting out three glasses together for sale. What are you going to do with three? I honestly am inclined, like, if I bought this set of five, I would probably put four out to sell because it's an even number that makes more sense. Rustic Rhythm, unique brand magazine for a country brand audience. That's cute. Look at that outfit. Wow. Can you imagine finding that costume today? That would be worth some money. Bay of 1957, just a whole bunch of 1930s and 40s era books in these stacks here, including a whole lot of Zane Gray, which is popular out here in the West. I like this motto. I see a lot of mottos out West. It's pithy wisdom, but I think this one's pretty good. Here's the classic gold united horse clock. And then here is a slightly different version. This is the Hopalong Cassidy clock. And that's why this one is $125 as opposed to $95 on the other one. Large tins are pretty common because they were a nice size that people kept them and used them later. This one's priced at $45, but what's funny about it is it's from Fort Wayne, Indiana on Lincoln Highway East. And we are right on Lincoln Highway. U.S. Highway 20 that ran all across the country to Portland, Oregon. We usually see military-related or senior-related pillow shams from the Second World War era that people sent back to family, but this one is for the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, and it's the old Canadian logo where they're still showing the Union Jack. A lot were made in the time, so they do only sell for about $10 each, but there are some really neat prints of Second World War aircraft, aircraft carriers, this one is caught at Kishka, showing the U.S. Army Air Forces over the Aleutian Islands. Very interesting stuff. They really wanted to make sure people in the home front knew, at least in an idealized way, what the war looked like and how modern our weaponry and planes were. They also wanted to make sure you could identify the enemy, and this is the Messerschmitt ME-262, one of the first jets ever. The Germans actually invented jet-propelled flight at the end of the Second World War, fortunately, they didn't have enough time to really implement it. It would have really changed things. Comet books and records, 30% off everything. Well, this might be a place to spend a little bit of time. Dick Clark's All-Time Hits, Volume 3. More books here, too. They certainly have a big selection here. And some more saddles. This is a U.S. Army Packers saddle. Now, as soon as you get things that have Army designation, the price goes up considerably. That one is priced at 300 if you're enjoying this as much as I am, please do leave a comment. Please do subscribe if you haven't. It doesn't cost a thing. And we will send you notices of future videos so you can come have fun with us. Please do join us in the chat if you're just lurking and watching. Well, you are always invited. I had someone come into the chat recently and say, oh, this seems like a group of people who all know each other. We have a lot of new people chatting with us. So please join us every Monday and Wednesday. And feel free to express yourself and have fun with us. Now, this car figure looks like it could be Henri out of Italy. Very good detail. He seems to be carrying a bundle of sticks or something. Yes, made in Italy, you can see there. Now, let's look at the back. Oh, shoot. The back of the bundle of sticks has been broken off. That is unfortunate because for $5, that was looking like a really good buy. These spiky-looking things are corn dryers, and you will see them in barn sales from time to time. So when you think, what in the world would they have used that for? Well, they just stab the corn cob on there and let it dry out. This saddle is different, and that's because it is German from the Second World War from the cavalry. And this one is a Model 25, priced at 450 We don't really see a lot of German saddlery. I imagine this was a confiscation piece that was brought back by someone from the war. And then this one was made in Wyoming. 
And if you ever see the Wyoming State logo, you notice it's a cowboy on a bucking bronco. Well, this was the kind of saddle you used on a bucking horse because you had to have a lot more to grab onto so that you didn't fall off from eight feet up in the air off the back of the thing when you're trying to train it to let you ride it. This one says made by Whitney in Saratoga, Wyoming. It's priced at four seventy five. We don't see this style very often. And this is neat. Yes, this is an actual lasso that has been formed into some sort of a thing to hold, gosh, a bowl, a casserole dish. Here's something that you could get from all 50 states, I believe, at one point. Certainly out west they were popular because they were plastic 3D maps by Kohler Graphics out of Denver, and you could see the entire state in 3D. It was done basically like a blow mold, like a Christmas piece, and you see all the highways, and you see the mountains, and you see the valleys. And unfortunately, what you also often see is damage because all you had to do was back into this on the wall and you could crack it because it is three-dimensional with nothing behind it. This one's priced at $36, which for the condition is just fine. Walking the Floor Over You in 1941 was Ernest Tubbs' big hit that propelled him to stardom. He was one of the arguable fathers of honky-tonk music and you've got a bunch of signatures not just his on here i don't know if that's the whole band but it's a great piece for 90 dollars. i like the stamp metal kitchen queens as much as i do the real ones this one's 54 dollars by wolverine this bower piece is a modification on the ring pattern that was done by ray murray and ray murray worked for them in the late 1930s until he went to work at treasure craft in hawaii in 1959 Bauer Los Angeles mark on that, $42. Lots of fun neon and man cave stuff, but again, all of this is reproduction. Have to admit, it looks cool, though. On the other hand, it's decidedly not reproduction. You would have seen a lot of tall trees like this where they hung from the wall, so you have the mirror and the hooks, but it didn't take any floor space like a regular hall tree. This one has the big wide pith race from the old that was quarter sawn back around 1900. Some fun and interesting hats here. We have the second one here is a constable's hat from England, priced at $125. The typical U.S. Army visor hat from around 1950, priced at $35, and the usual cap at $15. This one is an Air Force visor hat. Air Force wasn't a branch until after World War II, so we know that's after 1947. These are both West German, one with the tank and one that represents the Air Force. This one is East German, so you notice that the detail on the front is more similar to the Soviet-looking pieces of that era. And they have goggles. Goggles are something people really seem to enjoy and collect. If you can find the old ones from the war era in the box, so much the better. Headsets, too. I see one behind it there. They have a Hager candle holder and the two butane candles in gold for $24. If they were the Lucite candles, I'd be snagging that right now. Shirley Temple's crayon book, very popular in the late 30s because everyone wanted to tell her like Shirley Temple did. I just got a plate in this pattern. This is one of the last things Francoma made before they went out of business. They've been reconstituted, but they're not making the same things. This one is a deep bowl, and it was a very clever way of doing the single glaze, and then they would just cover up the edges here, and then the natural brick red clay would come out bunch of road signs and there are people who buy these so we're going to see if any of the prices are low oh no dog again it's hard being a dog isn't it that one's 18 dollars. and here's a space full of idaho license plates every state had them and there are collectors in every state for them although a lot of people want one from each state scenic idaho 42 that's a harder one to find because that's second world war and while they're promoting the scenery and fewer and fewer people are taking trips because of gas rations to see it. Now, this big bowl here is a good example of a very nice piece of fairly recent vintage art glass that is perfectly fine to collect and great to sell if you're charging the right price, which they are. They're asking 59 for this. This is Triska from the Czech Republic, and it has its original label there. So obviously, if that was an old Scandinavian or Italian piece, it'd be a lot more but it does feel greasy like new glass. And one thing about the joinery, it's just not as polished. And so you're always going to see this weird contrast looking into the bowl. 
So a little different from the finish that you would have seen on an older piece. But I like to show you that because you're going to find them without a label, and now you know that they're recent. A whole bunch of nice case pocket knives and some really good ones. The lower left here with the red blade is priced at 175 That's out of the 1970s. Frank Bush Cutlery with the German blade. Easy money there with the spangled handle. That's 250 There's a lot of these that were made more to sell to knife collectors, even though the quality is very good. When they start having fancier and fancier handles, those are really things that are made mainly for people to collect and not so much to use. Whereas when they have the old stag handles or the mother of pearl or a basic black like a Bakelite plastic, This has been reprinted many times, but the Birds of America by Audubon are still very valuable in complete sets. This is a 2011 edition priced at $2.95, but there's editions that go all the way back to the late 1800s. And this set of shakers is really unusual. It's a little hard to see through the glass, but it is advertising the Old Man of the Mountains, White Mountains of New Hampshire. That was the state logo is on their license plates well the old man of the mountain fell off the mountain and is no more and so that makes these not only collectible because of their age and being francoma pottery but because they now represent an attraction that's no longer there and so they're priced at 75 dollars at first i thought the price on this was 49 dollars, and i was going to grab it immediately it's a scale that would have been used anywhere from maybe a candy store to a hardware store it is a Jones scale. The original color is great. The name on it still being there is good. It's brown. So it really has a lot of nice features and is an attractive piece. And that's why it's priced at 99 which is not an unfair price at all. If it had been 49 I would have snagged it. These two bottle bases here are interesting because they are a company called Mdina, M-D-I-N-A. They just say sign art glass vase in orange on this one. A little bit hard to find that signature because it's etched. Yes, there you can kind of see it. And that signature is for this company, which was formed by Dobson and Harris of the UK. They were at the Royal Society of Artists. And when they graduated, well, Malta had become independent from the UK. And they were offering great deals to anyone who would come and create business there. And so... These two fellows went over and started this glass company in 1968. It is still going strong today, and they make really neat modernist-looking pieces. I believe this piece is out of production, and at $68, if I can get a discount, I might just take it because it's an interesting thing I haven't owned before. We're going to make our way downstairs eventually here, but I wanted to show this neat bottle from the 1890s. Notice that is a more controlled top that's put on but it still has to be applied separately because it's 1890s and that one is advertising warner's safe honey and liver cure now i wish that i knew more about how to identify the origin of these points but this dealer tells us they're from texas they do look authentic because the rippling goes all directions when you see the chip carving on a flint point or an arrowhead and it all goes the same direction that's a sure giveaway to a reduction the lion is only $20, and if he was a bank, I would take him instantly at that price. But I think he's just a figural. At $39 each, it is definitely worth taking a look at these dancer figures to figure out if they're genuine, if they're Hopi, and what we've got going on there. So we're going to look in this case. Also curious about this 1980s Coca Pelli piece on the left and the signed paperweight on the right. We'll find out who the signature is. $48 on the wall phone on the right seems like a great price. And the one on the left is 38, but that's just a receiver without a dial. Oh my, we're being a lot more modest than this lovely young lady from Bali was when she was painted. $30 on the Bohemian etched grape decanter is really a very fine price. It's a nice thin piece. The tray down here for 10 seems like a good deal too. I don't see trays often, but of course it has wear from use, as you would expect. $60 on the very large policeman's belt with all of the holsters and handcuff holders and other gear the mace holder mace holder tells us this is more recent but it's only 60 dollars, and that's a good price for a tooled leather belt like that gold leaf is kind of expensive so if you see old boxes of gold leaf an artist's estate or something like that pick those up 
One of the other figures that Goebel made were the chimney sweeps. This was about the same time as the monks. They were not as popular as the monks, so you don't see them as often, but I think they're actually a pretty neat looking group. You've got 43 on the cream and sugar, uh, though the jar is 32. So on the octagon blank, we have these really pretty pink etched pieces, and the prices are great. Only $18 for that console bowl. The prices on some of this elegant era of depression glass have really fallen so much that it seems like now would be the time for people to start picking them up again. 25 each on these. If you had the light fixture to put them on, these little Budweiser sconces would certainly be worth that. So check out these dogs to see if they might be Mortons because they look like they're really good quality and they're only $7 and $10 each. New vendors lower level. Go see them while we're about to because there are three levels and an elevator. Isn't that nice? An old building like this usually doesn't have an elevator. And, you know, for some of our older folks who love this stuff, it's nice for them to be able to have access to every level. Basement floor, antiques, vintage, and hopefully some great deals. I see why they need the elevator. They've got a lot of nice furniture down here first thing, and I especially like this old store display. Store displays are just something that everybody can use somewhere. People use them for their collections at home. Dealers use them at shows. People use them in their shops. This one looks like it might have been from a bakery because it's got the slats where things could actually get air. Made by the Schwanbeck Brothers of Detroit, Michigan. 1897, before there was an auto industry in Detroit, it was already a big city. Cute arts and crafts style desk with the little keyholes in front of the book stand. And this space is owned by Amanda and she's working very hard, but um, she, hello there. <laughs> she is a viewer and she said that she's doing something really important, which is taking out a bunch of stuff and swapping it around. And why is that important? <laughs> Fresh eyes, get, get it all moved around. And I always like to collect in like more vignettes. Yes. Yes. And when you sell down some of it, then suddenly the thing that looked really cool is gone and the center of your vignette is gone. And that's why it's important to work your space. I love that you've got a lot of brass there. And you said you're taking a lot of your 70s out and doing a fall theme. Yep. Lots of fall. Yep. Excellent. What sort of stuff are you going to bring in? Um, all kinds of stuff. Lots of like merry mushroom. Ooh. I have a whole bunch of new art that's all local artists. Uh, oh. Mountains. Oh, and look at this. The hand painted with the nice little dogwoods. Oh, that's very pretty. And only $35. The prices are very good. This is the Bauer Bruche Al Fresco, the speckled. See the speckling in it. This is one of the last things they made, and it's got the original bale. $25. That's a great price. Like this ship robe or side by side, whatever you like to call it, where you have the mirror on one side. So you have a full length dressing mirror. You have two drawers for your clothes. And hello, everybody. Uh, you also have a place to put your very large hat and your gloves and little accessories. So it's a pretty functional piece of furniture from about 1890. And the price on this one, fully restored, is only $450. Red Wing Magnolia. This is a great shape. I love the handles. This is one of the tailored designs from the 1940s, and it's priced at $25, which is pretty reasonable for what it is. This dealer is retiring, so they have a half-off sale going on. We're going to see if there's anything we need. This is a North Ohm Deluxe Tube Radio, and it says it's only $45. The question is whether it works. Cute old buggy seat that somebody told painted. And I like the narrowness of this stand from about 1890. It's just nice that it would fit in such a small space. And again, you've got the full length mirror and then a place to put your keys and the stuff you need as you run out the door. Here's the Lane Mallard TV lamp in the larger size with the backing, which makes it a little more interesting. And it's got the metal base, which is often missing. And so that's why it's $60. This is the complete thing altogether that you want if you're buying that piece. Look how colorful and fun this snow covered house on a creek in paint by number is. I have to say that's one of the better ones, and I love the frame. It's definitely one of those sort of cheap 50s frames like the highwaymen would frame their stuff in. And it's priced at 100 but, you know, a large, good paint-by-number in a decent frame that looks right for the period, that's what they're going for now. They have some blue indigo over here by Inesco. I just got the tree that you put in the middle of it. It was mainly serving pieces for the table. Late 1960s. And they've got just $10 on the pitcher, which I think is a good price. I like this little kidney-shaped table here. Desk with shape are just fun. It just breaks up a room where not everything is square. And this one's priced at $225, which is about right for this particular style. 
this adding machine with the printing and everything comes on the clear stand so you can actually see all of the works moving and operating while you're using this thing and i think that's a really neat feature that it's priced at 160 because of that souvenir plate from nauvoo illinois that makes a lot of sense because nauvoo was one of the places that the mormons attempted to settle and actually they have reclaimed nauvoo and it's now a big important national historic site nauvoo was not very hospitable to them when they were there Joseph Smith did not make it out alive from there, and that's why they came west and ended up in Salt Lake City. And there's a strong Mormon presence in southern Idaho as well. One fun thing about antique malls is you never know what you'll find. This is something for trap shooting, so this shoots the targets up into the air. The clamshell at $25 is a pretty good deal, too. I could probably double my money on that if I was headed to Florida. Convex frame from the 1910s. This one has a castle scene. And it's a great price. The only problem is that, again, with the reverse painting, sometimes the paint comes off, particularly on these, because they were, this is called On the Danube, and they were done rather quickly with a screen painting type of uh, technique. And so if you don't keep it in good climate control, they don't always last. From Idaho Falls, a little different kind of silhouette here in the brown tones. And that's only going to be $8 now. And it has the 1939 calendar that slips out behind it, and then you just push it back in. So since it's all there, that's a good deal. With all the interest in brass again, this armillary, which was a desk ornament, probably from the 1980s, I imagine, with that faux green marbling and that felt bottom. But it does have some age now, and I think this is only $9 with the discount. So I think I'm going to go ahead and get that. Montgomery Wards, the airline, was the brand they had made for them to sell by various companies. And it's got the stereo in it, too. It's only $25. I mean, if you were able to restore such a thing, it's a nice little side table piece of furniture, which was the idea. And then you've got your stereo right there. This guy looks right at home in this part of the country. This wilderness man, this looks like a chalkware piece in good condition, $89. A very plain but stalwart English tea cart or tea trolley, as they call them in England, priced at $95. This is neat back here. Troop 31 got together, and a lot of Boy Scouts did this as demonstrations or things they'd put in county fairs and things back in the 60s and 70s. And they did all the knots. These are all the knots they tried desperately to teach me in Boy Scouts, and I barely could pass the test. But funnily enough, as an adult, there are certain ones I use a whole lot, like square knots and bowl ones. So I didn't end up having to learn something. This is only $50. Idaho had the 1969 National Scouting Jamboree in this vicinity, and so people from all over the country came. I have never seen the Birdwood Molded Plastic Horse Plaque from 1973. It is dated. I looked at the back, and it's only $15, which just seems so inexpensive. The only problem with it is a little bit of wear on the high points. It's not that you couldn't color that out, but that would be cheating after all. On this shelf, I see a little John Perry piece, and it's the dolphin, and it's only $5, and that is going to come with me. Ah, oh, the golfer caddy. I've only seen one other one. It's the one that I bought and still own and have not been able to sell. I think he's cute. It's only $10 here. That's what I paid for the one I bought and tried to sell for $20. A strobe attack. This would have been for strobe lights being used in photography for various reasons. Strobe lights are not very good for people who have epilepsy, and that would cause a strobe attack. This is very art modern, this desk, and apparently it was made by hand, but it's got a great, very plain, basic, curvilinear design to it, all rounded at the edges. It's only $99. We saw a lot of people buying desks during the pandemic because they were working at home and now they either have them or they've gone back to work in the office. So desks have slowed down a little bit. Well, that was sure a lot of fun. I saw some things in there I haven't seen before and I bought some really cool stuff, including a sculpture I'd never seen before. So this was an interesting and fun place to go. And now I'm headed to a really beautiful drive through the Continental Divide. If you enjoyed this video, check out this one. 
Also click thumbs up to like this video and check the description for information about our Patreon, our memberships. We've got a lot of different levels with different perks and bonus videos and early content. Also, please do check out our website, theantiquenomad.com for appraisal help. And we'll see you again for more adventures in the antique and vintage community soon. Bye for now.